choir. All fire. right. Fire. She's fire. a member of the choir. She's a member of the choir. She's a member of the choir. She is a, an international MC. Here he is. You know what I'm saying? Because That's Pastor Conference Saturday, she was the host. All right. This one, we are ready to hear the word of God from our sister Philo. Give it up to her as she gives the word of God. Amen. Amen. God is good. Amen. God is good. And all the time. God is good. Wow. Yeah, I had to take a deep breath, y'all. I promise I am, like, so terrified. So to walk up here like I did, <laughs> that was Jesus, okay, y'all? <laughs> but um, I just want to thank God for this opportunity. I want to thank the leadership of the church. Um, thank you. Shout out to my choir members. They're going to back me up in this <laughs> preaching, amen? <laughs> All protocols up there. So thank you guys so much, um, Elder Essien. Funny story, actually. Um, last week, Sunday, after service, I was just talking to one of my friends, and the conversation came up about, you know, church and what we do in church. And I'm like, yeah, you know, sing at church. I do everything. But the only thing I've never done before is actually stand in front of the congregation and preach. And um, I was like, I would love the opportunity to, you know, like once a term, you know, like. And in my head, I'm thinking, yeah, God's going, you know, hit me with it like maybe next year, two years down the line, within less than 24 hours. I get a text message from Elder Essien. And I'm just like, God, right. <laughs> when he said, okay, you're preaching this Sunday, my words was, huh? Like, y'all know that meme that be like, I was like, huh? With laughing emotion. And I just, I was just filled with so much happiness. And I was just like, God, I know I said it, but you know I'm not ready. Come on, God. Like, you know I'm not ready. But God said the time is now to speak to his people. And so we're going to share a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, this morning, we just want to thank you for an opportunity like this. God, I just want to thank you for giving me an opportunity to stand in front of your people and share your word. God, let it not be about what I have written down this morning. But Holy Spirit, speak through me this morning. Let your word come and bring a transformation to your people this morning. Holy Spirit, move and have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And so we're going to get started. Um, let me grab my papers together. So my topic for today is, do you know me? Do you know me? And I'm not talking about me, Philomena, but I'm talking about Christ. And so I would really love it if we're all interactive this morning. Um, we're going to read from Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 to 19. And if I can get anybody, anybody to read. Matthew 16, verse 13. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea, Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, what do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. Amen. Amen. 19. Verse 19. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Amen. 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 So in this verse, right, 
Rather than Jesus telling his disciple who he is by showing his identity, he asked them, he's like, okay, um, who does everyone says the son of man is? That's the question that he asked his disciples. And then go about, oh, you know, every, at this point, everyone's answering, by the way. They're like, oh, yeah, some people say you're John the Baptist, you know, who was a powerful man in the Bible. He had really, really great presence, but he was killed by King Herod. And then they're like, well, some call you, you know, Prophet Elijah, um, who is a worker of miracles. He did so many miracles. So a lot of people are like, yeah, I mean, we've seen you doing miracles. So we can, we can say you're Prophet Elijah as well. Others were saying that, okay, maybe Prophet Jeremiah or one of the other prophets. Now, that first question where Jesus asked them that was just to prepare them for the second question. But who do you say I am? And then there was silence. When he asked, who does people say the son of man is, everyone was ready to answer. But then he made it personal for them. Who do you say I am? And God revealed it unto Peter. And he said, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And how we were able to tell that this, is, this, did not, this didn't just come from Peter himself. He said that Jesus is the Messiah, stating who Jesus is and who he comes from, which is the son of the living God. All right. And so um, that's when Jesus replied and said, so blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. And he, God re responds back to Peter the exact same way that he responded to Jesus as well. So you are the Messiah the son of the living God. Jesus was like, blessed are you, Simon. He didn't even call him Peter. He called him by the name that his father gave him. Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. For this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my father in heaven. And now he comes down to verse 18, and he's explaining who Peter is. And he says in verse 18, and I tell you that you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not overcome it. Amen. So as Christians, when we, you know, come to accept Christ as our Lord and personal Savior, we become disciples of Christ because we're followers of Christ. And that's what a disciple is, is someone who follows Christ, learns his works. You know, we've, we've heard different teachings in the church. We've um, seen different miracles. I know our, our parents from back in Ghana is like, yeah, I've seen all these different miracles at these prayer camps. Um, and we've also seen miracles here as well in the U.S. But the question that I'm asking everyone today is, do you know Christ? For you, not based on what you've heard at church, not based on what your mom and your dad told you, not based on what anybody else has told you, but do you know Christ? If Christ was to come down right now and ask that question, how are you going to respond? Do you know Christ as just my provider? He's the God who provides for me whenever I'm in need. Or is God just someone that you go to whenever you're just, you're just in need of anything? You don't have a relationship with him? You're just there just to, yeah, I know about God. You know, they tell me, God is good. God is great. Hey, he's going to protect me. Take me here and there. That's good, but what about that relationship with them? And so a lot of people, and we thank God for all the amazing testimonies. As you can see, like God is doing a big thing in everyone's lives. God is doing great things. But you don't want to miss out on this. You want to build a personal relationship with God. A relationship is between two people where you hear from one person, you guys communicate, you listen to one person, and the other listens to you. A relationship is not where um, Auntie Hannah and Elder Kashi, I don't know, I just use the guys, I'm sorry. Um, where all Auntie Hannah does is just talk and Elder Kashi never listens. That's not a relationship. You have to communicate. I have to listen to you and you have to listen to me. That's what a relationship is. And so most people are like, okay, well, I get where you're coming from, Philo, but now how do I get that access to God's kingdom? Well, I want to know him. Like, how can I get to know him? Well, that's why I'm here. I got you, okay? So there are three points that I want to touch on. The first point is through prayer. And so you might be here, and you're like, okay, what exactly is prayer? I just hear people always speaking in tongues. Well, 
Prayer is just a spiritual communication between man and God. It's a two-way relationship where man should not just talk to God, but also listen to him. Prayer to God is like, like a child's conversation with his um, father, right? So it's natural for um, a child to always go to their dad and let them know, hey, dad, I need this. I want some ice cream. You get your, you get your ice cream. Hey, mom, I need this. Um, mom, I need some money for my books for school. And, you know, they're able to provide it for you. But when you receive Christ into your heart, you become a child of God. And now you have the privilege to talk to him in prayer at any time. I think sometimes as Christians, we get confused and it's like, okay, I have to, you know, be on my knees and I have to pray to God, like, you know, like how the King James Version is. And my father, thou art the, uh, no, but it's a form of communication. Just how you will speak with your brother or your sister, that's exactly how you communicate with God. Once you receive Christ in your heart, you have the opportunity to do so at any time and anywhere. See, the Christian life is a personal relationship to God through Jesus Christ. And it's a relationship that is going to last for eternity. So during this time, you can speak to God. I speak to God in my car, my bathroom. Any and everywhere, you can speak to God. There's no form of, do I kneel down? Do I stand up? Do I lay poor shit? There are, all, there are different types of that as well, and they have their meanings. But you, you can speak to God any and every time. Amen? And the second point is um, through the word. Amen? And y'all, I got some revelation while I was doing this myself. I was like, whoo, God, that's a word, okay? So we're going to read from Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. Genesis 1 to 3. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Amen. Amen. So we're going to break this down just a little bit um, so that you can understand, like, when I say getting back to the word and who is the word and why do we need the word. So uh, Genesis 1, it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. So if we look in verse 1, we see that God is the one who created the heavens and earth. Right? So we have God the Father, God the Son, and we have God the Holy Spirit. And so in this first verse, God created the heaven and the earth, okay? So verse 2 says now, now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God, which is the Holy Spirit, was hovering over the waters. So now we have God the Father, and we have God the Holy Spirit. So where's God the Son? If we look in verse 3, it says, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. Okay, so was that the sun? Was that morning time? What was that? God said, let there be light, and there was light. And so I want us to go to John chapter 8, verse 12, really, really quickly. And I just want to uh, show you guys exactly what Jesus was saying to the people. If you can read that for me. John 8, verse 12. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness again. Oh, but we'll have the lights of life. So if we go back in verse 3 and it says, and God said, let there be light. That was Jesus Christ. Because in John 8, 12, he's saying that he is the light of the world. Like there's so many deep like meanings to this. I was like, God, okay. So I was like, okay, so we got God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit all in the beginning. All right, and God saw that their light was good and separated the light from the darkness. And so when we talk about getting back into the word, Jesus Christ is the word. The Bible is Jesus Christ. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So if I want to build a relationship with God and I'm not speaking to him, I'm not learning about him, how can I have that relationship? It just don't make no sense to me, okay? Like, if I, I just don't get it. Like, you need the word. 
Like, in order to become this walk with Christ, we cannot do it alone, which is why we've been given the word. The third, pers- the third thing that we need to build a relationship with God is the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit, which is God himself. All right, so I know sometimes we're like, okay, maybe it's my emotions. Well, no, not really, because emotions come and go, but God never comes and goes. He stays the same. Okay, so um, we're going to read John chapter 14, verse 15 to 17, and that's just talking on the Holy Spirit a little bit more. John 14, verse 15, if you love me, keep my commands. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. Amen. Amen. And so when, so think of it this way, right? So God came down um, to earth to become man, who was Jesus Christ. Um, and Christ was fully human. He lived on the earth. He did the physical things that we did. He felt tired. He got, you know, he, he went through it all. But then when it was time to ascend back into heaven, he didn't leave us for dry. He said, I will leave you with the Holy Spirit, which is God himself. And the, and the crazy thing is he actually lives in us today. He lives in us today. We just fail to communicate with him. And the Holy Spirit is there to convict us of our sins and also lead us in the right path that God has called us to go on. He gives us strength every single day to live through our day. So, see, apart from the Holy Spirit, we cannot overcome temptation. Apart from the Holy Spirit, we can't live the way that God wants us to live. We're going to struggle. In today's world, we want to do everything on our own. Oh, I, I got to make quick money. I got I to gotta make quick money, man. That's how, that's how I'm going to survive. Or I, I got to have the latest, the, the, the latest outfits, the latest shoes, the sneakers. I got to do this. I got to do that. And as Christians, we make excuses as to why we can't have time for God. But yet, we have time to go pay $135 to go sit in Mercedes-Benz Stadium and listen to Kanye West. No, 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 no. I'm say- what I'm saying is we have time to do that, but then at the end of the day, we're like, well, God, you know, I had a lot going on, and I didn't get time to spend in your word. I didn't get time to, to pray today. But on my way to work, I was bumping the, the later songs, you know? But I have time to make sure that I can watch the NBA finals. I have time to watch NFL. Oh, the Olympics are going on? Oh, bro, I got time for that. We make time for everything in this world but the word of God. And as Christians, we got to do better. And the reason for saying this is because we have to realize that we're not of the world. We are not. There's a time where God is coming, and he's going to take those that belong to him and go. And I'm sorry, but if you left down here, good luck. I don't don't know what else to tell you. (laughs) The time is now. It's it's not tomorrow because we don't know when we're going to die. And we don't know when God is coming. Literally, right now, death is coming for any and everybody. Young, old, medium, it's coming for everybody. Back then, we used to be like, oh, yeah, only the old folks are dying, so, you know, we don't got to worry about nothing. I can wait till I get, like, 30, and then I can take my walk with God seriously. No, death does not know age. Newborns are dying. Teenagers are dying. Adults are dying. Older people are dying. We don't know when the time is. Most definitely. Everyone is going to die. <laughs> we are going to die. But the thing is, when you die, where do you want to spend eternity? Do you know God? Look, I'm, I, I myself, I'm a testimony. I, I remember I used to go to church. I go to church every Sunday. When I was younger, I was just like, yeah, these old folks, yeah, every single day, hit it, blah, 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 blah. I'm just like, come on, bro. Like, my mom used to be praying every morning at 4 a.m. I'm like, sis, relax. You know, when I was younger, like, I'm like, like come on, girl. I'm like, girl, all this scream is not doing nothing. <laughs> but I, I just didn't understand. I didn't know God for myself at the time. So it didn't make sense to me. It looked like she was just doing whatever she wanted to do. Until I decided to take my walk with Christ seriously. And I realized that everything 
that we've been hearing at church, everything that we've been seeing around, it's all true, and it all goes back to the word. Do you know me? Do you know Christ for you? Not for who your mom told you, not for your Sunday school teacher, but not for nobody, sis. But do you know God for you? Do you know God for yourself? There, there's so many, there's three different kinds of people. We have the people that are like, oh, yeah, I know God. I'm on fire. You give me any Bible verse, I'll, I'll recite it right now. And their favorite, John 10, 30, I am my father one. Yeah, what else? What else? I know the word, like the back of my hand. But do you have a relationship with God? It's okay to know the word. It's great. But are you living the word? As disciples, we're supposed to be acting and walking and doing the same things that Christ did on this earth. Is that what we're doing? Oh, God, you know, I don't got time, man. I've worked 12-hour shift today. I'm tired. But you have time to Netflix and chill. So, and you're like, God, God, I'm, God I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I, I, didn't, I didn't have time today, but you were able to link up with the boys on Hotbox and do what you wanted to do. See, God has given us the choice right now. The choice is in our hand. It's in our hands. And we have to make that choice now. I'm not going to make the choice for you. Because the day of judgment day, God is not going to look at me and be like, yeah, uh, the question prayed for you. Your mama prayed for you, so you're good. Come on into heaven. That's not how it works. Okay? <laughs> if it was like that, I think all of us would be living our best life out here. Like, okay, volley me. Okay, but it's not like that. You have to have that relationship with God yourself. And I promise you guys, it is the best decision ever. Listen to all the testimonies that came this morning. You just pay attention to it. It shows and testifies the goodness of God. Imagine losing your wallet. And the funny thing is when Stephanie told me about this, we laughed. When we were praying, like... Because I always, I always say, like, there's no stupid prayer. And so, like, when we're praying, like, we were laughing. But God, God was not laughing. Whatever we say as children of God, if we're living right with God, anything we ask for in his name will be given to us. If we go back to um, Matthew chapter, um, his, God's response to Peter, he said, and I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So if I'm a child of God and, and I'm spending time with God, I, I speak to him every single day, and I, I have a relationship with God, well, what is it that I'm looking for that God will not give me? Like, what is it? If I go to my mom right now and I tell my mom, look, I'm in need of a new car. And if my car is tore down and it's broken, she's going to do whatever it takes to make sure that she gives me a car. And the reason for that is because she loves me. She's my mother. We have a relationship. It's different from me just going to Auntie Angie. I'm Auntie Angie, I need a new car. Well, I'm not Auntie Angie's daughter. <laughs> and Auntie Angie's not going to give me a car right now. And that's just because we have a relationship, but we don't have that deep relationship to where Auntie Angie's willing to go out of her way to do whatever it takes to make sure that I'm good. The moment is now. Do you know Christ? Do you know me? Do you really know me? Can God look you in the face and say, my good and faithful servant? Well done. Or is he going to look at you and say, you saw that man who didn't have no food and you had the money. You had food in your car, but you chose to drive past them. You saw your brother, your sister who was in need of help, prayer. And instead of praying for them, you laughed at them and mocked at them. Can, can we stop that as Christians? No, but really, can, can we stop? Because it's so sad that in, in, our own, in our own home, I can't go to my brother, my sister, and tell them what I'm going through 
because I'm scared that they're going to laugh at me and mock me with my problems. That is not of Christ. That is not Christ-like. Do you know Christ? Let that simmer real quick. Do you know Christ? Not based on what you've heard in church. Not based on what anybody else has told you, but you yourself. Having that, that encounter with Christ. And you don't only have encounters with Christ in the church. You can have an encounter in your home, in your car, any and everywhere. As long as you're willing. Do you know Christ? And I want to conclude with Revelation. Let me read Revelation chapter 2, verse 4 to 5, please. Do you know Christ? Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first. Consider how far you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. Do you know Christ? It says it in his word. Verse 6. Go, go, no, um, verse That's 6. Is, yeah, you're fine. Okay, amen. Amen. Do you know Christ this morning? And if you're fallen, it's okay. It's okay. I don't care what you did this morning. I don't care what you did last night. It's okay. You can come to him. He's arms open, ready to accept you just the way you are. You don't have to be the smartest. You don't have to look the best. You don't have to just come as you are. He will accept you. Do you know Christ? For you this morning, do you know Jesus? Shall we all please bow our heads?